Section two talks about nomenclature of amines. Amines are pretty easy to name. Let me go ahead and just show you some examples here. Okay, so first of all, if you have NH3, just memorize from general chemistry, that's called ammonia. Okay, if we have a simple alkyl group attached to the uh, hydrogen, I mean to the nitrogen, we can just call this methyl amine. Okay, if you have two, it would be called dimethylamine. If you had three, it would be called trimethylamine. So let's get an example here of uh, triethylamine. So this has three ethyl groups. They're all attached to the nitrogen. So we say triethylamine. Okay, so uh, we assume all of the alkyl groups are just attached to the uh, nitrogen. Now, if you have two groups attached, you need to alphabetize it, okay? So uh, let's do uh, this one here. So we have a methyl group and then an isopropyl group. So in alphabetization, iso comes first. So we would name this isopropyl methyl amine, okay? You might have a ring. Okay, and once again, if you have a complicated ring, you name this as a group, okay? So let's recall how we do that. You name the alkane, okay? And you chain the, change the ending to be YL, and that's how you create a group that's now attached to the nitrogen. So this would be called cyclohexylamine. Now, the amine has a pretty low uh, priority. So for example, if you have something with a hydroxyl group in it and an amine in it, okay, we don't call this an, um, you know, wh which one is carbon one, right? Carbon one is gonna be here actually, and this is part of the molecule. So we call this an amino group, okay? This is an amino group, and we would name this as an alcohol. Okay, we would name it as an alcohol. So this would be uh, butanol, right? This would be butan. One all would be the, the parent chain here that I can highlight maybe in, in purple, okay? And then we have an amino group at the four position. So we would name this four amino uh, butan one all, okay? Uh, the amino group is the last priority. So for example, we have these things called amino acids, okay, which are components of proteins and things like that. And so we name it as an acid and the NH2 group is called an amino group, okay? So for example, this guy right here, uh, we consider the carboxylic acid to be the highest priority, okay? And this carboxylic acid has uh, two carbons, so we could call this acetic acid or ethanoic acid, okay? And remember, for carboxylic acids, you don't need a number for the position of the carboxylic acid because it's always assumed to be carbon one. And we have an amino group at carbon two, so this would be called two amino ethanoic acid, okay? And that's the full IUPAC name for that. In biochemistry, you might refer to this as glycine, glycine, okay? We talked about PABA when we talked about uh, aromatic chemistry, and this is a component found in sunscreen, and we synthesized it from, um, you know, benzene or toluene. And so this is also an amino acid. It just happens to be on the aromatic ring, okay? So P-A-B-A -A stands for para-aminobenzoic acid. So again, this is the amino group, okay? Amino group. So this is para-amino 
benzoic acid. Okay. Now, if you have an NH2 group on an aromatic ring, as we discussed in, I think it was chapter 18 or 19, we call this an aniline. Okay. So, if you have a, like a chlorine group or an ethyl group or something like that, you're going to name these as aniline derivatives. Okay. So, this is a bit of review. So, we would call this orthoethyl aniline. Okay, and uh, we would call the one on the right parachloroaniline. Okay, um, so that's uh, the basics of nomenclature. Okay, I'm not going to give you a very complicated uh, name. So let's do uh, a couple of the problems. So problem one, we just need to name the compounds. Okay. And so uh, we, uh, we have uh, this, this complicated group here, okay? So this is as complicated as I want to get. But uh, this is carbon 1, 2, 3, and 4, okay? And so this is going to be, um, so it's going to be uh, a... Uh, a more complicated uh, attached attachment to to your uh, to your amine. So this is going to be uh, three three dimethyl. Okay, one two three four is butane, right? Butyl. Okay, and this is so that's the three three dimethyl butyl group, right? I normally don't like to give these, uh, but here I am on the video doing part A, so I've got to do this. Normally I have ethyls or isopropyls or cyclohexyls or phenyls, something like that. Uh, so this is a 3,3-dimethyl butyl group. It's a more complicated thing because you have methyl groups attached to the butyl group. So 3,3-dimethyl butyl, and then we call this amine, okay? In molecule B, we would call this a cyclopentyl group. So this would be called cyclopentylamine. Okay. In C, we have uh, a dimethyl, and then we have a cyclopentyl. So that's going to be um, uh, C comes before M, so that's going to be cyclopentyl. And remember, when you have two methyl groups, you combine them. So you write dimethyl amine. Okay? So when you see something like this, dimethyl amine, it means both methyl groups are attached to the amine. When you see something like this, 3,3-dimethyl, it means the methyl groups are attached to the carbon-3 of some other group. Okay? In molecule D, we already discussed this. This is called tri ethyl amine okay and well one way to name this guy here and not using an IUPAC but providing an acceptable synonym would be to call this the amino group okay and so if you would number it right we have an isopropyl at carbon 3 and we have an amino at carbon 1 so a sloppy way of naming this would be uh, cis there's two cis's, one with the two wedges, one with the two dashes, so it's not too uh, specific. But cis, uh, three isopropyl, okay, cyclohexylamine, or you could say um, amino cyclohexane, okay. So, uh, a and E have complicated substituents, which I don't like to test on. Uh, F also, we would call this uh, cyclohexanol. So this is an amino group attached to cyclohexanol, okay? So a sloppy way of naming this would be trans, and then uh, it would be uh, three amino 
cyclohexanol. Now you don't need a one for the position of the alcohol in the cyclohexanol because it's a ring. Cyclohexanol, we don't call it one cyclohexanol because it's assumed to be at carbon one always, okay? So anyway, that's a bit of naming. Let's do the next problem. Drawing structures is generally more easy for uh, students. So let's go ahead and try to do A. So cyclohexyl methylamine. So let's draw a cyclohexyl group, okay? Let's draw a methyl group, okay? And we need to fill in the missing valencies on nitrogen with hydrogen atoms because it's a hetero atom. So you need to draw that H there, okay? In B, we have tricyclobutylamine. So let's stick the nitrogen in the middle. And then but means four and it's cyclo. So we need to draw little squares, right, to represent the cyclobutyl groups. Okay, so like a little propeller or something. In C, we have diethyl aniline. So let's draw out aniline. And we want to stick two ethyl groups there, but we need to know what our numbers are. So here's one, two, three, four. So now that we have it numbered, we can put the uh, ethyl group on carbon two and carbon four. And I should note that whenever you have aniline, you don't have a number for the amino group, okay? It's not one aniline, because when you have a ring, it's assumed to be carbon one. Uh, let's do D last, but let's do E. We have amino benzaldehyde, so let's draw benzaldehyde. Remember, when you draw a structure, you always work backwards. Here's benzaldehyde, okay? You draw this, and then you add in um, the substituents. Here's the amino group at the ortho position, so I'll draw it at this ortho position on the top. Now for stereochemistry, we have two methyl cyclohexanamine, okay? So here's uh, cyclohex, okay? There's a two uh, methyl group and then there's an amino group, okay? So this is two methyl, Okay, here's my carbon two at the top of the ring and there's my methyl group. I'll draw in CH3. And then at carbon one is gonna be my amine, okay? It's always assumed to be your amine if it's at carbon one. So this is 2-methylcyclohexylamine or 2-methylcyclohexanamine. And the 1R and 2S refer to stereochemistries at carbon one and carbon two, okay? So what I normally do when I'm doing stereochemistry is I introduce a uh, wedge or a dash quite arbitrarily. What I like to do is position the lightest substituent to the back. So I arbitrarily make these two going with a wedge and I analyze them. If it perfectly matches the 1R, then I don't do anything. Let's, and then if I uh, get the opposite, then I flip two groups. So let me show you how that works, okay? So this, car, this hydrogen is gonna be the lightest substituent, it's gonna be uh, carbon four. And then we analyze, right, going outwards, the three carbons, carbon, 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 they all are tied, okay? And then we go out further. This one's attached to three hydrogens, this one's attached to another carbon, this one's attached to another carbon and a nitrogen. So this is gonna be the highest priority, this is gonna be the second priority, this is gonna be the third priority, and when I uh, drive the car or look at the ordering here, it indeed is 1R. So I just randomly, you have a 50-50 chance, right? I randomly guess correctly that this is the, uh, this is the 1R structure, okay? Now let me analyze the, uh, wait, is that carbon two? That's carbon two, sorry. So that's 2R. So what I need to do is flip that to get the correct structure. So let me redraw this molecule over here, and I'm going to change the wedges and dashes. Okay, so the wedge to methyl is now gonna be a wedge to a hydrogen, and the dash to hydrogen is gonna be a dash to methyl group. So with that flipping, I now have a 2S, and that's what I want in the name, okay? Now let's analyze what we have for the R stereochemistry. So once again, I told you that we just 
arbitrarily draw something and then check what we have. If it's wrong, flip it, okay? So this hydrogen is four, this is gonna be, okay, so when you analyze carbon versus nitrogen in the periodic table, nitrogen has a higher atomic mass than carbon. So the NH2 group is gonna be the highest priority, okay? Nitrogen outweighs carbon, okay? So when you have carbon, which is carbon 12 versus nitrogen, which is nitrogen 14, let's say, it's gonna uh, be heavier or, or win out when you're doing the, weight, the weightings or the priorities. Now we have these other two priorities, okay? So we have uh, this one, which is gonna be priority two, and this one is gonna be priority three, okay? Let's drive the car, and this is one to two to three back to one. That looks counterclockwise, so that's one S. That's not what I want, so I need to flip that. And my final molecule is going to be one in which I have a methyl group going back and an amino group going back, okay? So I'm done, that's gonna be my final answer. Okay, stereochemistry is always complicated, but uh, it's good to review that from time to time. It pops up in all these molecules we were talking about. Let's do another problem. Here's problem three. Notice how I've uh, left this little thing down here where it says try problems, 42, 46, 47. The textbooks is awesome and it always guides you to doing more practice and that's really the best way to learn by doing practice problems, okay? So here uh, we're asked to draw all the constitutional isomers with molecular C, uh, formula C3H9N and provide a name for each isomer, okay? So I'm assuming we don't need to worry about stereochemistry if any shows up. So first thing I like to do is I like to work off of the carbons, okay? So here's three carbons, one, two, three, and I'm going to go ahead and attach the nitrogen. So this is my template, okay? Let's leave the template alone. I'm gonna first attach a nitrogen to uh, this carbon, and remember that we have uh, a valency of three for the nitrogen, and of course, a valency for four for all of the carbons, okay? And we'll wanna count the atoms here to make sure it satisfies the molecular formula and move from there, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That looks good. All right, that's a good structure. Uh, so now what I want to do is uh, attach my nitrogen to the central carbon, okay? Okay. So that's three carbons in the longest chain, and that's going to have the correct molecular formula. Now I want to start with two carbons, okay? And so uh, there's only one spot to attach the nitrogen, and that would be on the carbon on the right or the carbon on the left, which would be the same, okay? And then I would need to add a, a third methyl group, right? Another carbon. We have the three carbons in the formula, so I would have to add a carbon there. And let's fill in the valency by drawing an H here. And my next template would just be one carbon. It would be, you know, a CH3. So I could do a third possibility that has three uh, methyl groups here, okay? So when you see this formula, you might think there's like only two molecules, but there's actually one, two, three, four molecules, okay? So let's name these. Uh, this would be called, um, right here with the uh, propyl group here, this would be called propylamine, okay? And we could sp uh, emphasize that for putting um, a one in front of this, one propylamine. Anyways, the one down below, it could be called two propylamine, but I'm just gonna call it isopropylamine. Molecule on the top right, this would be ethyl and methyl, so you alphabetize those. It would be called ethyl, methyl, amine. And the bottom structure would be trimethylamine. Okay, very basic problem. You should be able to do that very well, uh, especially watching this video. Go ahead and try those uh, additional problems for additional expertise and skill building practice. Thanks for watching and let's get started on section three now.